Hey everyone, Reed here with Big Strong Book, author of Chorus of a Thousand, now available on Amazon. And today we are talking about The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. This book, as with many books on this channel, but this one in particular, has been a long time coming. Uh, obviously, this is uh, a standard bearer in the world of science fiction, and even more specifically, literary science fiction or soft science fiction. Um, I, as if you've followed the channel, uh, I've read two other of uh, two others um, by Le Guin, uh, but they are both from the Earthsea series, so more fantasy based, definitely um, different than 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 this in many ways. Um, but I loved A Wizard of Earthsea and The Tombs of Atuan, the other two that I've read. Um, and I and I had had this, but you know, of course, when it, it, it wasn't just the, the, the genre change that daunted me, it was just, especially as I started this, it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's almost like it's a different writer. And I mean that with um, full, Full compliment to to Le Guin. It 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 is just such a it, it's it's more more mature. Um, you know, it certainly in just the 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 weight of what is at stake in the story, the weight of um, the the themes that it ponders over. Um, but it's just. It's it's you know yeah it's more th thematically complex the, the the prose is different the the way she writes is different and I'm not and not to say that in her more YA based lit which is what Earthsea is kind of can be roped under or children like children's fantasy within those books her prose and the way she writes comes comes across as very um, direct, yet there's a lot of beauty lurking under the surface. It's extremely approachable, and it's universal. It's it's almost like you're reading uh, a, a book of uh, ancient myths. And again, I, I mean that with full compliment. E everything that might be taken away as a negative from Le Guin, I, I really mean as a positive, so I'll just, just say that right off the bat. Um, but she's dealing directly with humanity in this and what we consider to be cornerstones perhaps of our society, of our identity, and with how this novel explores um, gender, how gender is related to politics um, and all of that, Obviously, we, we've we've come a long way in our discourse uh, since this book was published, but I think this still remains absolutely relevant because precisely because we are having more open discussions about the nature of gender and and gender identity and identity of the self and and all of that. It's more relevant now than ever. Um, and I'm even more just kind of awed by the fact that this was published in 1969 when I can't imagine what it would have been like to, to, to be a, a reader of science fiction or, or just a reader in general in 1969 or a mainstream reader and this starts to get that recognition and you read it and it, 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 it would just kind of, you'd bow over because of it. It would just be so um, overwhelming in a, in a, in a great way. Um, but this, so I'll get a little bit into what this book is about. So this novel, uh, kind of resides within her larger, uh, cycle of related science fiction short stories. Uh, there's a few novellas, uh, and novels called, I think it's called the, the Hainish. I think that's how you say it. I'll, but I'll, I'll say that the Hainish cycle, um, and what, what's big within that, as we, we enter into what the left hand of darkness is all about, 
is there is this kind of it's all it's almost like a futuristic uh united nations uh among uh planets in space this intergalactic civilization uh united nations called the the ecumen and they send what they call the the first envoy genli i who is one of the two protagonists uh, of this book. And he goes to this planet that, that's kind of nicknamed Winter, uh, or I think, or it might literally be called Winter, but then he's, there, there's this, this Gethin continent, um, uh, the, the Gethenians, and he, he starts uh, at his en roles as envoy um, in a country called Carhide. And his duty, his mission, is to try and convince the powers that be on this planet to join the Ecumen. Because the planet of Winter, the lands of Gethin, uh, the, the countries within Gethin are... Um, they're isolated from everybody else. Um, they, they exhibit some reasonable, uh, technological progress, but they, they don't have, they don't really have the means to fly. That's established. Uh, although it's kind of like, they don't really feel, they don't really understand why you would need to. Uh, and they obviously don't have capabilities for, um, inter interstellar communication or travel. Um, so he has, uh, if I can find the name of it, um, he has a, a he has a device, um, that, uh, Genli has a device that he shows off to them. I, I forget what it's called. Maybe it's an, or an Ansible. I think that's the name, an Ansible, which is a faster than light immediate communication. That's one of his main proofs that he uses to indicate that he is who he says he is and that they that they should trust him and that the ecumen is this body of uh, disseminating and and praising and it, it's tr it's not only trading of goods and services but also of knowledge of intellect it's it's that it's i mean what you would expect in in that kind of a relationship between um in our world between nation states and or states and uh, in 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 a galactic scale, uh, systems and planets and and how they relate to one another. But one of the big things about what um, what this planet is like is that people on this on this planet, uh, ostensibly humans, uh, and of course the, the, this book is um, the, there's interwoven. Um, some, some, uh, documents from observers, uh, there's, it, there's also, uh, some, some mythic legends that are interspersed too, but, so some people wonder if this planet, uh, was a, an experiment of past humans. But anyway, uh, the humans on this planet, or the pe I'll, I'll say the people on this planet, um, do not have a fixed sex or gender um, in, in the way that that we that humans have traditionally understood it. Um, they again they go for, they they go in these. Um, I think the cycles are called Kemmering cycles. I'm gonna refer back to the uh, chapter that these are discussed in. The chapter is called the question of sex, and. Or just it's referred to as the sexual cycle. So the sexual cycle averages twenty six to twenty eight days. Uh, for twenty one to twenty two days within the cycle, the individual is somer, sexually inactive, latent. On about the eighteenth day, hormonal changes are initiated by the pituitary control, and on the twenty second or twenty third day, the individual enters kemmer, estrus. In this first phase of kemmer. He remains completely androgynous. That's an, the, the use of the pronoun he. That's another thing I'll get into here. Um, gender and potency are not attained in isolation. So when they, um, 
if they if they are kept alone, they remain they remaining. It says incapable of coitus. Um, the sexual impulse is strong, uh, but when the individual finds a partner in Kemmer as well, hormonal secretion is stimulated to the point where they eventually exhibit um, a male or female um, sex organs and characteristics. And it is from there which then reproduction can be possible but again it's 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 a very narrow window but then then they refer then they revert back to a more androgynous state and so what and the, the, it's it's almost an offhand remark within that um that chapter but the the the, the researcher states somebody who is the father of five children could be the mother of five more um just with the way it works now, um, I should note because I'm I'm sure there will, there will be readers who who might be disappointed that Le Guin doesn't lean into this or at least explicitly mention it. I kind of took it for granted, but then or I just took it as a given um, that homosexual relationships on the planet of Winter that if if two individuals are in Kemmer that they're will probably be um, same-sex pairings. There's no mention of that though. I that was just more I I assume because that's you know that that's it's that's going to be relevant and it's going to be a part of a society anywhere. Um, and and it makes sense if 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 the um, if characteristics and hormonal secretion, it, it makes sense that there would be cases where um, more of a, like that, that, that there would be heterosexual um, couplings within Kemmer and there would be homosexual. Um, but I think in the, uh, in the introduction perhaps, which I do not read book introductions usually before I read them, I think Le Guin states that she does not does not like the, that did not cross her mind maybe to explore the idea of homosexual pairing so i felt it was implied but that that might have just been me extrapolating too much um and another thing too that i know Le Guin has mentioned regret for that she didn't go in this direction she had thought about it at the time backtracked because she felt it would be too complex and that that is definitely up for debate um is that pretty much every character is referred to by the pronoun it's the the he him his pronouns um which when when we if we use um non either non-binary pronouns like they them theirs or um something else and i'm i'm not an expert in it i'm not knowledgeable so i'm not going to but it, I think it's zir zim zirs. I I don't know. It's I I, I genuinely that that is not an area of expertise for me. Um, but using a, a pronoun other than he or she, she could have used they. Um, kind of I know. Um, uh, Greg Egan in his some of his books. I think he has been committed to that in in uh, describing characters who do not have a sex that they, he uses different pronouns because that's just that that's intrinsic to, to who those characters are. Um, but Le Guin, I think expressed regret at that. So going back to the plot of the story that that's, but that's crucial to understanding where this book is coming from because it creates a barrier of understand a barrier of understanding for for Genli. It is so hard for him to try and get to the bottom of character motivations. He's he perceives characters as acting more more feminine at times or more masculine at other times, and and he he feels that they need to be they might need to be more manly or or something like that because because he feels that he he can't get a straight answer but i think it's because 
Genli is in such a, st even though he's already been, by the time we enter the narrative, he's already been on this world for at least a year or two. Um, he's in still such a state of culture shock and he's trying to understand this society when, because he cannot experience it really, because that is not how his biological, physiological makeup works because he has, he is of the male sex for, you know, his whole life and everything. It, it he, again, fundamentally um, cannot, there, there's a fundamental lack of understanding that just um, will not change. So, he that that is something that is that is confusing to him uh and then there's this character estraven who is um i don't think he's a current prime minister when the book begins but he is uh, a member of the court of, of carhide he's kind of a, a high up politician he is at least from genley's perspective he's kind of sending mixed messages to him as to whether or not he supports him Eventually, Estraven is banished, and this happens early on, it's not a spoiler. Estraven is kind of banished from Carhide. He's banished from the court. And eventually, Genli kind of follows in the same geographical direction of Estraven, um, just because he's, there's the, um, again, and I'm gonna, uh, the, uh, uh, the land of Agorium. Kind of there are neighbors where Carhide's almost in a in a conflict with. Um, he'll go. He goes over there to try to see if he can find luck persuading them, and and then their their paths kind of cross again. So, this book is very. It's it's very slow paced, and for a lot of it, I didn't know what Le Guin was trying to say. I really, I really didn't know until, I mean, it's hard to talk about it without getting into spoilers, so I will here in a little bit. Um, but as I understood it, she is showing that though we may think, though, the, though those though sexuality is important though though gender plays an important role it doesn't those things which some might view as intrinsic to who we are are not there are universals in the human condition in how humans can relate to one another that transcend that um that you can, and, and there's a lot of, obviously there's a lot of um, duality uh, within this. And and some things that I will still have to um, really think about um, and and come away with, be, that's just the, the nature of it, the nature of me, not usually, I don't, Again, I don't take notes when I read. Um, but I think that that is what Le Guin is going for. It's stripping away the the ideas of um, sexuality and, and gender being so in, in intrinsic and getting to the core of what humanity is. The, the, hum the human responses of empathy and and joy and belief in a in a cause great greater than yourself even maybe maybe that's being too reductive on or too elementary or simplistic on my end but that was that was what really started to struck me was was the court of of empathy that was that was um that that was a, a, a big one um 
and sacrifice and and I mean big themes that that seem obvious it seems like yes of course these but it's it's almost about it's it's rediscovering this and you know you get these because the societies of Carhide and Agorian in the, this book they're kind of in a big it's it's just a it's a distrustful um it's a it's a distrustful environment that there is no direct war necessarily but things seem constantly simmering there's constant espionage constant just back and forth al almost this kind of controlled uh and subliminal chaos but it's so it's it's almost stating that even with the 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 absence of sexuality and and gender though it though it has though it has kind of turned the the citizens of of, of winter of of this world it it has a uniquely communal aspect to to their living that there there are still those almost natural tendencies of of humans and coming against conflict um and, or or it, it might or she might be making a further commentary that because people might be people have the experiences of being both father and mother and it's 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 i mean the lightness i mean lightness and darkness in general seeing the the whole side of things um is imperative and we you know we we think we can operate in one way but in in fact i mean i'm i'm not i guess let me let me backtrack because i'm not making sense um humans in this world are, are still capable of great atrocities um so maybe she's saying that those are universal too but and and part of it is that genli must see it and I mean this story is about uh, an outsider a character who is a great stand-in for the reader trying it's about looking into the core of what makes humans humans what what really drives us there there's that connection there's that there that there's that undeniable bond and connection that we can form that that transcends gender and th there's there's the human bond that 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 and that 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 almost might be unique um i mean i i know that there are animals that have certain like pair bonds um that that transcend just a uh, a reproductive or a just standard sexual relationship but that is i i think i th again i think that is what Le Guin is getting at that is my perspective from reading this that 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 interaction between Genli and understanding how Estraven in particular operates and what his motives are and and what Estraven does for 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 Genli and how Genli observes that and and again because these two individuals are I mean a lot of it is two sides of the same coin as Estraven acts and he he knows he, he he's con he's he's constant he's very fraught at a lot of times and there's a lot of deep resonant conflict within him and genli is all he's always trying to to figure out the these these answers and um and and solutions um but he ultimately needs to to let go at some points so that is that is what i think is is 
that that um, that Le Guin is getting at that light. I think that's what the quote is. That light is. I gotta get. I gotta get to the um, the the. Ch I gotta find the the chapter where it's discussed because it definitely stands out. Um, let's see if I can find it. of light being the left, I think it's light being the left hand of darkness, of the two sides of the same coin, that, that humans can be, um, that we will, that we, we have, we have this base self-destructive capability that may or may not, um, prove to, to be the end of us. Sometimes, perhaps, I can't, I, I can't find it, but, um, uh, that while we are capable of potentially, um, you know, we, we, that, that, the, the base human condition, part of its baseness, the, the dark, if you look at it from, and it's compared to the yin and the yang, the, the lightness and the darkness, the darkness being that, that, that hell bent on, the, the heinous things we are capable of, kind of atrocities of political prisoners and and things like that, because that comes up in here, and then you the the lightness of human connect, the the ability of humans to connect on a deeply resonant level, to empathize with one another, the the power of of belief and the belief in unity. Those are the kind of the the two, the the things that are played off each other here, and so I'm going to get into spoilers here. I I highly recommend this, and this is something that I will definitely revisit soon, with note taking, because now that I know where the story goes, and what I think the it's uh, Le Guin's approach to the the themes in here are, I think I can be better equipped to to really start to fully understand it, but I really want to because this is such a great book. So I would highly recommend it. So getting into spoilers. What I meant by when it started to click for me was the the last, I don't know, third or so of the book that uh, consists of Estraven and Genley kind of making their way um, back to Carhide over the ice. And... It was as their bond, as their true friendship grew, that's where it started to click to me for where she was going with this. It was partially to show Genli that, to, it was to, to show him the, the universal nature of things. Um, and that these, these kinds of, uh, these kinds of relation and relationships always being a big part of part of them, but but relationships that have a greater deal of complexity than than just you know those kind of symbiotic sexual relationships because and he can start to see that he sees the way the connectiveness within these greater societies, but it doesn't. It doesn't start to click with him, I think, and and it, and Estraven because and for and one other thing too is that throughout the whole book, almost the people of Carhide, the people of uh, um, or Goyen or whatever that whatever however you say it, they are they are alien to him when in fact they're they're human too, and. Though those universals, even in a case of extreme isolation, that type of response of a Straven to rescue him, to say, I believe, I believe in who you are and your mission. I want to unite us. I want to unite us. I want to help you. And in, in the moments when, you know, they're kind of out there and they, it, it's, it's depicted of how they have moments of just joy they have that they have that joy they have that comradeship it's them against the odds and that ultimately even though it comes at the cost 
of the Stravens almost self-sacrifice, it prevails. That idea prevails. And so I found this ultimately uplifting because for a while it seemed like it was just going to go on kind of a bad um, a bad point. And of course, in the presence of unity, the governments, the governments kind of freak out when they see they, they, they do, there is a certain sense of unity, um, but it is at the cost of these governments kind of going through a big um, tailspin. And that that's when I think this started to really click with me because I, for a while, again, I was, I was unsure of where this was going, of what, uh, what Le Guin's intent was, but I think I was on the right track with that. I don't know. Who knows? I may have been way off, but, um, yeah. So the, this book, this book was great. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to diving into Le Guin's other, uh, works of science fiction. So the left hand of darkness, if you have read it, if you have read, excuse me, if you have read it, let me know what you think. And as always, I will see you guys next time.